challenge, as Felipe said, what we want to, to bring to the discussion today um, is the role of the, the SDGs. I mean, we had, uh, we had something prepared uh, before COVID to do something like similar, but in a, in a physical mode. Uh, but then we got COVID, and COVID put us to think a lot about these things again. And what we did uh, was this research note. The research note uh, was, uh, is being issued as I speak. I've, I've asked that it was done by myself and the other two uh, researchers that work with me in the center, which is Philippe Pires de Almeida and Manon Blom. I will ask uh, uh, one of them, please, to put the link of the research note in the chat so you can you get to, to our LinkedIn and there you can have access to the research note and the research note to great extent is is my basis to do the the, the presentation today I would like to start the presentation as Philippe suggested with a pool I would like to understand where are you so I don't need to read the slide please read the slide Diogo uh, will be sending a, a poll now and it's, uh, um, uh, I hope in 30 seconds or 40 seconds, the reply will be there. So just see how you feel in your organization. Hey, we already have almost 100 people replying. No, no, and just a note, there is some uh, brown uh, uh, blocks in your slides. We cannot see them very well. There are some boxes on top of the slides. Can you share the screen in a different way? Actually sharing not your screen, but the actual file that you are presenting. I think that's what I have. Um... Yeah, yes, uh, Flip is right. So, so, and share your your slides, your pre your desktop, and share only the file. Mm -hmm. Share the file, and I will end the polling. So we have one hundred and thirty-one answers. Uh, I'll end the poll now, and uh, I'll share the results. Right, noon. Yeah, yeah, please. So I'll share the results. Uh, can you see the results? Yes, we can. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So we are basically saying that, in, in fact, that is a the main trend for you. It's a clear sustainable agenda and an ambition to find more sustainable products. So that's half of the group, I would say. So we have almost uh, 200 replies, so it's quite significant that half of you believe there is already a clear uh, sustainable agenda, of course. It's part of the target group that you are. Um, I don't know whether you still are seeing something you shouldn't, but I mean, I cannot move from here now. Yes, Can I continue? We yes, we still see some uh, black or brown uh, boxes on top of parts of the slide. Yeah, but I cannot remove them. So, well, let's try to move that direction. Uh, so, what is the agenda for today? Today's agenda, uh, it's uh, what are the SDGs? Uh, just a, a quick reminder of, of what they are. Uh, most of you uh, really know what they are, otherwise you will not be at this meeting, I'm sure. So, where were we in its implementation pre-COVID? Um, and then came COVID. And finally, now what? What is the role of the SDG? So this is the plan for the next 20 to 25 minutes that I plan to do the, the, the presentation. So where are we in terms of the SDGs? The SDGs, as you know, were, were created and uh, launched in uh, 2015. They succeeded uh, uh, what was before, before the millennial goals. We are talking about 17 SDGs broken down into 169 targets. Uh, some people, like to see it as the first 15 being the, if you want, the rules of the game uh, or the game itself, then 16 is the rules of the game, peace, justice and strong institutions, and 17 is sort of the partners in the game. 
So that's a way of seeing the, the sustainable goals, all in this, all part of the sustainable um, uh, 2030 agenda. Now, um, the sustainable development goals uh, have been the most inclusive consultants consultation process one has ever seen. I mean, we are talking about uh, governments, we are talking about NGOs, corporations, civic associations, everybody has participated in, in the development of these. And this is specifically important to, to businesses um, for a number of reasons. They explicitly call on business intervention. Their success depends on the corporate involvement. Opportunity for business solutions are everywhere and deals with developing and developed goals so this is not one of them only and uh, the, the achievement depends on partnerships and that's why 17 is such an important uh, sdg this is a statement that was done at the time in 2015 because it was very very clear since the very beginning that this is the businesses need to be completely involved. I mean, business are those which have the capital, the resources, the processes, the skills, whatever you want to make it happen. So if the companies become, and that's the challenge, and that's what we are going to talk, imagine companies that are really forces for good, then that's the mechanism to make all of these things develop. But of course, governments are enablers, NGOs need to challenge all of these, but at the end of the day, the, the big motor behind this are, are the companies that need to, to, to deliver it. Now, this is very important because SDGs are, are, they are a key, a key piece of a bigger puzzle. So when we talk about SDGs, we need to understand that this is a bigger puzzle. What you see on the left screen, on the left hand side of the screen, is the research note we published um, uh, two weeks ago, which is about responsible business leadership and the path towards purpose. You will also find it in our LinkedIn. And what we what we, we we defend there is this concept of responsible business. Um, if you just need to look at to, into the words that I have uh, in bold to make the point of what we believe it's the responsible business. We are talking about the holistic sense, economic, social, and environmental nations. We are talking about business strategies. This is not an add-on. It's part of the business strategies. That's what a responsible business means. We are talking about the stakeholders' interests, and you are, we are also talking, and that's what really makes some, somehow this different, this concept, is that share, stakeholders sharing the same broader part. Send in the research note, if you are curious about it, you just need to go and, 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 and um, dig a bit deeper on what we mean. So that was the first part, what are the SDGs, why are they important, the, the, the being part of a bigger puzzle called uh, being a responsible business. So where were we before everything started, where, where we got uh, the, the, the COVID? This was what was being said all over the place up to two months ago. The next 10 years, an incredible opportunity to save our planet and build a fairer society. I mean, we have heard this uh, a lot. Uh, a decade to deliver the sustainable development goals. So this was in, all over the place. And it, it was already very difficult to implement all of this. But there was this, this, this huge ambition that the next 10 years will be there to, to, um, to deliver the, the, the agenda. From the business perspective, uh, you could see this uh, like a purchase order from the future, which is an opportunity to develop businesses and create jobs. Uh, this 12 trillion number, I've seen it quoted so often, I don't know whether it's 10 or 20, it doesn't matter. It's a huge opportunity that was seen for the businesses getting a hold of the SDGs, deliver what, what is expected to, to, to have a better, a better planet. So why are they important? They provide a common language, and this is very important because when we have a common language, an universal language, we can all understand each other much better. There are measurable ambitions. This is something which comes from a, a, an organization like the United Nations. But, but you have there a, ling a language that we all that work in corporations, we understand what they are talking about. Targets, KPIs, milestones, that's what, what's in there. Of course, you have more things that are more measurable than others, that, as happens in any corporation. One thing is to have KPIs for sales, the other thing is to have KPI for whatever you want, human resources or others. It's difficult sometimes to measure these things without some sort of qualitative approach. This is about 
opportunities for business intervention, and it's more than just um, avoid arming strategies. This is about being proactive on strategies that they can really uh, create these this purpose-driven uh, business models. And they provide uh, communication at the end of the day is a fundamental part of any process of implementation. And communication, this being consistent, transparent and effective to markets and to all the stakeholders because the communication becomes the same. Just with one, two, three SDGs, you can communicate a lot to different uh, target audiences. Uh, these are four things that make the SDGs very important. Why are they, uh, they are so important? If seen on another perspective, we were talking about 280 million new jobs, uh, possibility to be to be created. Uh, all about innovation. I mean, it's important for recruitment. It's important to build trust and reputation. It's important from the investment point of view, as we were saying. It's important, very, very important to, to be able to assess the risk of the companies and in such a situation as we are, even more important, they provide all of this in terms of the, uh, of the different dimensions. This is a report that uh, came out last year from PwC and, and uh, in fact tries to, to make clear where, where are we in terms of understanding the, within the, the corporate world. 72% have mentioned the SDG in their reporting publications. It's great news, but let's be clear, in many situations, it's just because the regulation obliges the countries to, 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 to issue uh, sustainability reports. The thing is that many companies have already moved forward and created this, uh, the concept of integrated reports, which is a, a report that has financial and non-financial put together, because at the end of the day, this is all about financials. 59% refers to as part of their sustainability report. In the sustainability report, you have the SDGs. 51% mention them in the annual report. So when they don't have the integrated report in they have the financial report on one side and non-financial report on the other one, 51% have mentioned that. But 34 mentioned the SDGs in the sections of their business strategy, which is very important is understanding that the SDGs are part of the business strategy. And this, and finally, uh, and, and this is not uh, less important, is that in the, in the typical CEO statements that always come with the, with the, with the, with the annual accounts, uh, already 21% um, mention clearly the, the, the SDGs. And the SDGs, as part of responsible business, as part of sustainability, at the end of the day, is building one strategy, and I, I, I say this quite often, I don't believe in sustainable strategies. For me, sustainability is the strategy. There is nothing else uh, uh, expecting us. This is a, a, a very interesting uh, study from McKinsey, uh, February 2020, so this was just before uh, COVID. And this is very interesting, because if you take, for instance, uh, let's forget for the moment from the government programs, and we look at the environment programs and the social programs. What this slide is, is showing, in terms of long term, in 10 years, from 2009 to 2019, in 10 years, people said, yeah, environmental programs create long-term value. So that doesn't change a lot. 90% to almost everybody. I mean, it's very hard for a company to say that they don't see value, long-term value on environmental programs. But the interesting thing is it changed a lot in terms of in the last 10 years people seeing the short-term value immediately on the environment programs. And the same applies to social programs. And I'm sure that when they will be doing this in one year or two years after all, everything that we are gonna see, this short-term value of the social programs will become more and more obvious. This is an indication of where, which are the, the most and least prioritized SDGs for the G250. And you see there, um, no, and I don't think that, that is a surprise for anyone that the climate action is the SDG that is most uh, prioritized. Uh, then comes decent work and economic growth, and then there you go uh, through all of them. This was from July 2018. Slightly likely to have changed a bit, but that's where we are. But it's funny, it's very interesting to see when this will be done in two years' time. You, you have here the zero hunger with 21% alone no poverty to 28%. I strongly believe that these are the sort of the SDGs that will uh, be uh, rising up the, the, the ladder. So this finding suggests 
that is a good level of business awareness and engagement around the, the goals, uh, around the goals. There is a clear indication that they are on the top of the executive agenda. It's hard these days to find uh, boards, uh, small, medium, and we can also talk about small companies in a, in a minute. Uh, it's hard <coughs> that this doesn't become part of the, uh, of the, of the, of the agenda. Again, this is becoming an universal language. They build trust. And I mean, that's one of the things that we'll find that I'll come to that in a minute, which is building trust with the, the, all the stakeholders with the, the current crisis. I mean, it's, it's uh, building it or destroying it uh, rapidly, more rapidly than people saw. It. But of course, there is also significant room for improvement, no doubt about that. And then any, any anything, any uh, report, and even the, the United Nations in the in the site, they make a very um, interesting uh, track record of where they were every year, and they are the first to admit there is a, a significant room for for improvement. And that's so. With this last statement in mind, that the private sector can't afford to ignore the SDGs, and the world cannot afford the private sector to ignore it, them. There's sort of where we are, we, where we were uh, in February. And then came COVID. Anything I say here, it's uh, probably less, less dramatic than it should be. Um, pandemic, we all know that. In two, year, in two months, completely changed everything around the world. Uh, so far as of, for, so far meaning uh, uh, yesterday, we had three and a half million identified cases in two and a quarter of a million people dead. Uh, that's the, the, the John Hopkins uh, report. In fact, in the last two weeks, I've been following last two weeks, every year, every day, you have 100,000 more identified cases and 10,000 more deaths around the world. A few statements on, on, on the economic impact, statements from people you, you, you know well. Um, the outlook is dire. I mean, uh, we, the, down, the downside in all of this per capita going down is more than obvious everywhere. Um, Christine Lagarde talking about the large contraction in output in the deteriorating labor markets. And uh, Angel Gurria from the uh, ECB said that it's uh, declines in global GDP are all over the place. So it's a, a health crisis, it's an economic crisis that we are facing. How is COVID affecting the SDGs? Um, this is not meant to be readable here. It's sort of uh, inviting you to go and read research notes because what we have there is uh, SDG per SDG, what is the COVID-19 effect in each of the SDGs? And uh, it's impacting them all. There is no SDG that is not impacted by, by COVID. And in, in this one, we, what we're trying to say is to uh, be clear what what are the companies doing to help each of the SDG? And the response has been absolutely fantastic. I mean, solidarity is all over the place. Um, I, 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 all the companies we have here, we just feel guilty because we're just mentioning a few because there are so many more that are do, doing a lot for this. But having said this, uh, it's important to understand. Oops. Sorry, it's, in, it's important to understand that there are also some bad practices. Uh, raising prices of key medical products and equipment, cancelling orders already placed to vulnerable suppliers, dividends, distribution of dividends, uh, while at the same time cutting costs in a way that really hurts other stakeholders. And uh, last but not least, uh, paying relevant bonus in companies with significant number of layoffs. So we also see this. Uh, fortunately, the standard behavior during the crisis is not this one, but um, this is uh, the reality. So with this in mind, now what? If this is what is happening, we have the health crisis, the economic crisis, uh, lots of solidarity, but also bad practice, what will come next? And the key question becomes, with the current crisis, maintaining the right balance, short and long-term vision and is being stretched to the limit. We know that because this is the key question. Whenever we talk about sustainability, it all comes to, to the table. It's this trade-off that many people see as a trade-off between the short and long term. And this is being stretched to the limit, no doubt about that. So 
Will the COVID-19 crisis slow down corporate engagement with SDG? So that's the question that is in everybody's mind. A likely scenario with this pandemic? Yes, these are quotations from our research note. Companies will tend to focus on economic survival. Citizens will fall back into basic priorities. Social stability, and it's very important. Maybe that's taken some countries. Meanwhile, it seems like the environmental issues are okay. So why should we care about SDGs now? And moreover, what we have, what we have, what we have is this possibility of diverting attention. Um, the risk of building the future, of not building the future, is quite obvious because you have this serious and immediate crisis. The risk of not building it is huge, and that's uh, a likely scenario with the pandemic. And it's very important to acknowledge this. It's not try to. Uh, hide our heads in, in the sand. We have to be clear that this is a serious risk. And I'm sure when we get to Q's and days, uh, we will have an opportunity to come back to this. So, will we be back to normal or to a new normal, which is becoming the normal, is talking about the new normal. What are we hearing with this crisis? More human connection, back to basics, else, else, else. We can live with less consumption, reduce social inequality, we are seeing fantastic solidarity. Everybody has to have a decent life. Work from home, how will it change? What will change in education? Need to deal with poverty. Put the human being at the center of the action. There are families starving. Protect the environment. The key role of technology. This is all over the place. This is what we hear every day in every sort of audience we talk to. In other words, this new normal seems to be, I would say, the language of the SDGs. You get back to this and you say, what will change in education? Wow, wow, wow. In all of them, you have a, it immediately sends you back to, to the SDG language. So if there is anything that is very, very powerful, if this connection between what apparently we all are willing to, to achieve and what's already, already in there. So I raise the question, is there anything more universal than the SDGs to build a global common agenda? If that's the new normal, if that's the future we want? Probably not. This is Paul Pullman, a guy that I respect a lot. Uh, I follow him for three or four years and he is, is very, very adamant of everything in terms of uh, sustainability. Uh, he, he says this, which is a very, he comes from the corporate world and most of you work in the corporate world, so you know what to the importance of referring this to business plans um, uh, as, 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 an, as, a, as a target for businesses. This is a very powerful statement from the United Nations. This can mark the reversing of society as we know it today. One that protects present and future generations. The way companies respond to this crisis is the defining moment that will be remembered for decades. So it seems to me in all of this that it's sort of as I see it. I mean, we were in point A. We are suddenly on point B. But many, many people still have this ship, which is, yeah, let's solve the economy, let's solve else, and we'll be back to point A. That's what I don't believe. We'll believe somewhere in a point C. I don't know what it means, but we'll be somewhere else. So it's, if we have this mode of saying just solve big crisis, economic big crisis, big else crisis, of course you need to solve it, but not with a vision to go to point A. That I personally don't believe at all. Meanwhile, I leave with you a provocative thought, um, which I, I, I mean, it's one of those things that if you really think about it, it is completely, I mean, it's like, I mean, <laughs> it's sort of Kennedy saying, I will be in the moon and we didn't have any idea of how to get to the moon. This is sort of the same. If we could create an universal corporate process, this language that we all know, measurable to, to everybody in terms of transparency. In other words, this will be break those 169 targets that we have into the different corporate agendas. Just give you an example that comes to mind. Could be any example. We have to get 800 million people out of poverty. Hello, Coca-Cola, can you do 3 million? Unilever, can you do five? Whatever. It's becoming a KPI that then delivers the debt. And that's something, in my view, very, very critical. But it's, uh, I mean, it's a huge task 
yeah, to coordinate, to coordinate. But coordination is the name of the game in the future. So why are they even more important? They help identify and manage the risk. Innovation and new, new products are absolutely critical. Able to attract investors, as this one that the BlackRock just launched about to advance the SDGs. And this was already launched in the context of the, of the COVID crisis. Uh, a very, this is absolutely key. A powerful recruitment tool for a new generation of employees. And uh, more than ever, these 17, the SDG 17 partnerships is the only uh, possibility we have to, 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 go, to go somewhere to a point C that we don't really know where, where, what that means. In conclusion, our take on the matter. No doubt it's an undeniable disaster. It's able to slow down, but it's also a tremendous opportunity for a reset. And that's how we see it. More than ever, we believe that the SDGs will emerge as a unifying agenda. The spirit of union and common purpose that we are all feeling now for one in my humanity can be found on the SDG agenda. We don't need to invent anything else. We know what to do to get to point C, what I call the point C, we know what to do. Tremendously difficult, yes, we know it's tremendously difficult, but it's, the, as I say, the virus giving us a, a great chance. And uh, finally, the last one, which is, this lovely uh, sentence from the United Nations, which is all about not leaving anybody behind. Uh, and that will be the challenge. Um, because, um, I mean, we people which are we more living in the privilege of more developed countries, uh, we take most of these things for granted. And um, the feeling of not leaving anyone, no one behind needs to be everywhere. And this would be my, my, my message. I think I did the 20 minutes, so let's do a little bit more, I guess. Uh, and I will leave you with the final two. <clears throat> uh, I would like uh, Diogo, if you don't mind, to, to launch this poll. And um, uh, from there on, Philippe will take it. Yes, so, so I will launch it uh, just now. So see if you are seeing it. Yes. So half, half of the people has, have already voted. We're close to 200. Uh, Diogo, I would suggest okay. if you want to cut because 75% of okay. people have voted already. So, so I'll, I'll share the results. Wow. Great. Thank you very much, Nunu. Um, so I'll, I'll work a bit as a, a moderator for, for the session. Um, so uh, this group, these uh, 200 people that are, that are here with us, our community, are actually quite positive uh, that uh, the current crisis will help accelerate the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals and the United Nations Agenda for sustainable development. Um, a quarter is not sure, wait and see, and, that, and maybe 20% are less, less optimistic. Um, thank you, Nunu, for your, for your views, your perspective. Um, sometimes it's useful to have uh, also a bit of a, an historical background of how these things emerged and how the SDGs emerged. And I've been, uh, as you know, I'm, I'm a researcher on social innovation. I've been working for many years in this uh, sector. And before the SDGs, we had something which you may remember, which was the MDG, MDGs with the Millennium Development Goals. And they were defined for a 15 year agenda. They were defined by the United Nations in 2000 until 2015. And there were just eight goals that would point us into areas where we should focus our development priorities. And there was actually a great progress during those 15 years in those eight goals. They were very focused, very defined. They were around uh, ending poverty, around primary education, around fighting HIV and malaria, 
alongside other goals. And there was actually a lot of effort, a lot of focus, a lot of development, and a lot of success on those areas in 15 years. Due to the success, the United Nations did take two sustainable development agenda around these goals and was more ambitious. Not eight focusing, but the 17 covering all of the major areas that care for humanity and asking not for the development um, community to get around the, the goals, but to the whole society, corporations, governments, the development community to get behind sustainable development goals. Initially, I was very skeptic about the SDGs because they were everything and nothing. But then I start seeing in the last two years, some change. So companies started trying to understand what they did, how it aligned with the SDGs, entrepreneurs choosing a few SDG, uh, SDGs to align their work. Uh, each project that was being launched was looked at the impact of the SDGs, not only the 17, but all of the goals underlying each SDG, which are much more specific. And I thought, well, actually, surprisingly, we have a new language. The language of what we want to achieve in the next 15 years across a lot of dimensions, the language of sustainable uh, development. And I start seeing some real change. So will that change accelerate? Will that change pause now with the crisis? That's, I think, a question in everyone's uh, kind of heads. Uh, corporates are key to implement the SDGs. I think the agenda was built for corporate engagement to move us forward in a different society. But corporates will have a lot of challenges. We have different uh, corporate executives working in uh, large and small companies that are taking our open executive course of, about responsible business. And we ask them to challenge us a little bit in this seminar and to bring their questions from their perspective. Uh, and first, maybe I'd like to ask uh, Annabella Silva from BP, Portugal, uh, that had these areas of sustainability uh, in BP. And BP has been, uh, has, the oil sector has been in the eye of the storm, right? We are seeing uh, a big pressure on oil prices, uh, a big challenge to the business models. Um, what, how do you read this crisis and, and, and do you believe in, in this message that will accelerate implementation of SDGs? What's on your mind of, of the oil companies as you are struggling with these things? Thank you, Philippe, and thank you for the presentation. In fact, the, this is uh, really a perfect storm, we, we, we call it. And uh, very often uh, we are used to have this kind of um, challenge in the industry. But I think that uh, nowadays is really tremendous, the, the environment we are feeling. But I think we have set our ambition and, and the purpose. And recently the company has launched in February a new aim, in, a new purpose to stay committed to the, the big uh, challenge in the, in, in the organization and also in the world, which uh, we do believe that we have an important role to fix the, the mission's issues. And that's why we are so committed with the, all these activities. Although I think it's really important to um, understand that it's not easy for corporations to balance this short term versus long term. And I think no doubt for the great companies uh, and the big companies in the world that they assume this responsibility of taking action now, and then it is just a time to stop thinking about um, future strategies, just the strategies to do it today. And this is part of the decision. Although balancing this crisis as emergency of the short term and the fixed LP now is also an equation very difficult to sort it out. But I think that if we have very clear that um, the, the world needs a solution and we want to be part of that solution, and there is no turn back. And uh, I think that as a big company, as BP is in this market, please, uh, does have a huge responsibility to play uh, the solution. And we are working very hard to make it accelerated and not just going to the um, less slow down scenario. So we are just putting all the efforts to make sure we really embrace all these SDG, SDGs that are so relevant for make business sustainable. And I was privileged to participate on the course uh, that Nunu was um, given at the Catholic Business School uh, to responsible business. And it really opened my mind in terms of how can we do things, simple things, 
in a local context to make the difference and, and by using the methodologies and tools and bringing to life these very good and nice words around strategy, development, impact, how can we really do it uh, in a very uh, mature and, and structured way. So I think that there is a very hope in the future, the future that is happening now. And we have definitely um, embraced this objective of playing a very, very uh, active uh, role in the society to make things change today. Mm -hmm. So you are positive that we'll be able, the corporations will be able to implement this? I'm positive, although I'm conscious that it's going to be very hard to influence um, the way that the companies should include, should think differently um, because they do have an emergency of the PL for this month to fix. So this is really difficult to, to answer it, but I think that the big companies do have the responsibility to make it happen and to make all the efforts and leadership by example that you can do it and sacrifice some of the difficult decisions that sometimes it's so difficult to have the courage to take um, decisions like, you know, don't leave no one behind and to secure some of our suppliers in a difficult times where we really need to cut our costs um, and just don't have the decision to no, leave no one behind. So there's a, here a question of the, the PNL emergence. Uh, Nun, do you really believe, and I, I turn to you now for a comment, that large companies with a, really an emergency in their, in their PNL with their business kind of going down will stay focused and will stay true to the sustainable development agenda. How do you see the reaction of, of the companies and I guess that you, that you, that you talked with? Uh, can we keep the momentum? Uh, that's, that's the key, the key, key question. I mean, I, I'm not going to enter into the specifics of the oil industry because it's in their own, it's a huge problem. But it's, it's uh, the question, if you take it as a, as, a, as, as a global question, which is about uh, how do you fix the p and and at the same time you still uh, live up to your values that you, you part of your corporate uh, values and, and purpose. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I mean, let, let, let's be clear, we, we, can, we don't need to complicate a lot. I mean, if we want to talk about managing the PNL, PNL, uh, well, we know there are a lot of people which are quite creative, but I mean, at the end of the day, a PNL can be solved either you increase your prices or you increase your market share or you reduce your costs. Full stop. So, increasing prices doesn't seem an option now, and even if you can do it, you shouldn't. Increasing your volumes, yes, it is true that there are a few industries that they are able to do at this very moment in time, but they are very specific but to a great extent, it's very, very tough to increase your volumes. So it leaves you with the good old costs. I mean, reducing costs. Reducing costs at the end of the day with the dimension of the challenge that we have. And we should not be um, uh, shy away from saying that many companies will not survive. That's for sure. But what we need to understand is that reducing costs is not the solution to get to point C. It could be a solution to get sort of half of the way to point A. Yesterday, for instance, I was talking to a CEO, he was telling me, no, no, even if I get to either 65% of my workforce tomorrow, I will, don't, I will not change, uh, I will not solve a drop of my problems. So it's not reducing costs, getting rid of people, get, stopping orders, that will make the difference in my, in my view. So it's all about, in my view, reinventing the business, but we can come back to that later on if necessary. Okay, uh, so BP is part of obviously of a large BP Portugal of a large multinational. Uh, we also have large Portuguese companies uh, uh, facing uh, the, this crisis in the eye of the storm. Um, I would like to pass to to Sandra, um, Sandra Pombo, also uh, heading these areas at uh, sustainability at FASEC, uh, which is another company that's been kind of uh, in the news and uh, and face a difficult situation. Um, what are the challenges you're facing or what are the questions you're asking yourself about the SDG agenda and if companies will stay true to the agenda or not in the, in the months and years to come? Sandra. You are muted, I think. We can't hear you. Yeah, it's okay now. Yes. 
Uh, so I was saying thank you for the invitation. Just a clarification, I'm not responsible for the sustainability. I'm the head of global and the brand communication department. But this is a theme that it's in my heart. And also I believe that everyone in, in a company must be responsible and push the SDGs agenda to become a reality. I, I have to say, I had the opportunity to read your research note previously to this conference. So I, uh, that was my starting point. And although I believe and I'm completely committed to the mission of the center, our center, your center for making, um, making clear to businesses that sustainable development might be, will be the next competitive advantage. Nevertheless, I struggle with its implementation. And one of the things that I noticed on, our, on your research note is that you, you tend to mention, you know, global giants, companies that are in very good financial health. And when you take this challenge of, you know, designing a strategy, strategy that is not only focused on profit, but mostly on sustainable development, that becomes an issue because the companies that are um, in good health, they have something very important. They have time. They have the benefit of time. They have the benefit of time to strategize, time to re-strategize, to engage every stakeholder, uh, to have a long-term vision. And these are typically, you know, uh, also companies that they do also have, and this is something that you mentioned in another research note, a very strong purpose for which they live by. But this is not the, the reality of most companies and mostly now when something as, as predictable as coronavirus happens, most companies just think on how to survive. So my question is if it's possible for companies that don't have a stable financial condition or are struggling to survive to act beyond profit and how? And the other issue that I have, and it's also related with these same companies, I mean, I'm referring to companies like Unilever, Danone, that they also have, so they are global giants, they have a robust financial condition, uh, and they also have something in common that it's very important. They all have CEOs who either grew up within the company or have a long tenure as CEOs in the company. And this, I believe, grants the CEOs, the CEOs a unique personal proposition. They have the long-term commitment. They are driven by a purpose. This might be common you know, in multinationals and their family business, but it's definitely not the case in most companies. So again, my question is, what happens when a CEO and its board of directors, directors change every four years, for instance? How can you motivate them to create responsible business, business strategies? Isn't the many their measure of success? How can we justify a third way? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sandra. Uh, and I think you posed two very interesting and related questions. One is, if we have to rely only on a large multinational corporation with robust finances to implement this agenda, we may fall short of the, of the goals and not engage everyone. And also the issue of leadership, which is key and, and long-term view in that leadership, which often is not the case when we rotate leadership quickly, especially in, in, in public companies uh, that are rotating CEOs increasingly uh, more, more quickly. Uh, Nunu, would you like to comment on that? How do you see those challenges and how do you, how do you res respond to them? Uh, I mean, uh, well, it's different questions leading to the same scene. The, the first one is basically um, uh, companies with purpose. Yes, the big ones have been able to develop most of those things, but I have no doubt that those that have very clear purposes with a multi-stakeholder approach, those that really cared about the employees, those that really cared about the suppliers and the value chain, are those that are more likely to survive now, be them big or small. 
I have no indication of the contrary. The question becomes, when you are small and it's all about surviving, it's, it's how, how, do you, how do you get out of that? Again, I mean, for me, the only answer here is, is reinvention because you need to understand that it's not by reducing costs to the extreme that you will be able to survive. There is something else about this. And the, the matter of the fact is that these big corporations that are leading the way, they are looking for value chain companies, companies on their supply chain they, they really live up to the same values. I could give you a, a lots of examples of situations where small and medium companies were obliged to change just because it was the only possibility they had to apply to public tenders, to, to tenders of big companies. So that will not change. That will not change. And these companies which are really forced for good have their purpose, and they will certainly move out very happily from the crisis, they will be looking at these sort of companies. So. Looking at the values is still very, very important to me, whether you are big or small. On the second one. So how do you convince the CFO? Well, I, I will send you an article uh, <laughs> that basically says the title is the CFO is your new climate change manager, because there is a lot of money to be, to be done on that part. I will send you the article. Um, the second question, it's, it's uh, I, I, <laughs> I relate a lot to that. I worked uh, more than 15 years in a, in, a, in a big oil company, multinational, and I've seen two CEOs. Then I moved to the national oil company in Portugal, and in seven years I found five CEOs. So I can relate to that easily. You know, when, when we think about these things, the have thing that happened in the planet, and, and the, you heard me saying this in classes. Um, you know, me, Mr. Milton Friedman, Nobel Prize of Economy said, the only social responsibility of companies is to make profit, full stop. And he said this in the 70s. And that marked, paved the way for many uh, uh, companies, many CEOs around the globe, all focusing more and more in short term. And as you said, when the CEOs don't come from within and they come from somewhere else, it's all about making my bonus this year, making my bonus for the exactly. next years. No doubt about it. Now, those are the things that are really like i strongly believe i had to do a lot of research with my team in the past and if you look before friedman before the second world war world war you had a lot because most of the the, the, the economic groups were family owned there was a lot of purpose a lot of purpose at those times were more about philanthropy but there was already purpose then we had these uh, 60 years of turmoil that throw us all into the wall with the gdp measure uh, that we wanted wanted to achieve and then the bonds that were paying around and then what I see in the generations that I teach, and you all have, most of you, when you deal with this new generation, they want something different. So I personally believe, because I'm not optimistic, that in 20, 30 years time, somebody will be making history, look behind, look back and say, well, everything will, was right. With the exception of those 60 years where they got mad. And by the way, in those 60 years, when you, you move from 3 billion people to 8 billion people, so, before I was born, we were only three billion. Since I was born, we moved from three to eight. So everything happened at the same time and destroyed, and destroyed the thing. So that's my, my take on that one. Yes, that's one of the things that most of the companies, because it's about their values, they will need to do it. Okay, so you, you believe that in a couple of years, uh, administrations will understand that profit is not the way just to profit is not only the way the purpose and sustainable development is uh, Sandra, I, 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 it doesn't matter what i believe the world will be what it will be and i personally what what i think is that um, uh, it's in our hands it's in our hands to make those changes and uh, i'm sure that i mean 200 i'm talking to 200 people now and mm -hmm. i'm sure in this case i'm sort of preaching converted people i'm sure that most of you I'm pushing open doors, but at the end of the day, we are all apostles or something, and we need to make that different when we talk to all the, the decision makers. They will be forced into a corner that most will feel uncomfortable. Or so. Okay, thank you, Nuno. Okay. Um, we also wanted to hear the voice of, of entrepreneurs. I don't know if uh, Jalmo Gomes uh, is uh, is here. Jalmo, are you there? No, no, he's. Not here. But Tom is, but with another name. I think I've seen him with under Claudia something. Ah, okay. Okay. And, um, okay, so, so uh, Jamo, you want to... 
You want to say something? Hello. Yes. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Uh, sorry, um, I when when uh, Nuno make the invitation, don't uh, told me about uh, these conferences uh, in English. Sorry, I have problems with. Uh, Talk in English. If uh, you don't uh, mind, I change my my speech to to Portuguese. If yes, you, I, I will then summarize your question your question in English if needed. So okay. please speak Portuguese. That's fine. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the question is, no, no. So uh, what uh, has you are an entrepreneur, yes. um, and how are you in a way? What would you like? We are speaking about nice words about sustainable development goals and building a sustainability agenda and uh, driven in some ways by large companies. Uh, but from the entrepreneur perspective, what challenges do you see? And what would you like to challenge Nuno's view on, 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 on the SDGs implementation? Bem, um, eu, eu acho que como empreendedor vejo de facto vários, um, vários desafios, principalmente nas pequenas empresas que pensam no seu dia a dia em fazer produtos inovadores e, e colocá-los no, no mercado, muitos deles com, esta, com este propósito, que é a questão do, do, da sustentabilidade e, e olhar para todos estes pontos da sustentabilidade. Quando entramos numa, numa crise tão profunda, temporária, sendo temporária, alguns, alguns desses, desses pontos, desses objetivos destas pequenas empresas ficam sempre em suspenso, ou seja, não sabemos muito bem se a inovação, se aquilo que estamos a trabalhar vai ou não ser valorizado pelos clientes finais, quem compra, efetivamente. E é muito mais fácil, claro, para uma grande corporate ver o seu propósito ser alterado quando existem outros métodos ou outras formas ou outros produtos para, para, para vender. De facto, estamos perante um grande desafio para empresas, por exemplo, como a minha, que parte do ponto zero a pensar na sustentabilidade, num turismo sustentável e é um grande desafio no nosso dia a dia colocar um produto no mercado a pensar 100% na sustentabilidade e como é que ele vai chegar aos clientes. Posso falar, obviamente, pela minha experiência, e penso que é, que é, é por isso que, que, que aqui estou. Nos últimos três anos lancei um produto a pensar no turismo sustentável, ambientalmente, obviamente, mas também ao nível do, do, do impacto social, ao nível das regiões onde nós operamos, e o crescimento tem sido bastante lento. Face, face às nossas expectativas, ou, ou seja, a aceitação dos clientes tem sido interessante, temos tido crescimentos de cerca de 500% ao ano, agora, quando somos empreendedores e temos uma startup, queremos que isso seja, de facto, cresça muito mais e é isso que é esperado por parte de, 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 dos empreendedores, mas, por vezes, impactar apenas com este propósito que é a sustentabilidade não é suficiente. Pelo menos é aquilo que eu vejo para já ao colocar produtos no mercado apenas e exclusivamente com o rótulo de sustentabilidade. É necessário algo mais, fazer algo mais e é um desafio, obviamente, quando existem eh, motivos como esses, como, como, como o Covid-19, COVID eh, é um desafio enorme para empresas pequenas eh, como, como, como a minha susti sus ter sustentabilidade para viver no seu dia-a-dia -dia apenas com um rótulo de sustentabilidade e de, 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 de responsável ambiental. Um, uh, obrigado, thank you. And I think implicit in Jalmo's uh, sharing uh, is the question, will sustainability continue to sell? So for, I would say, several years, people would speak about sustainable products, but in reality, when going to the shelf of the supermarket, consumers would not pay extra for sustainability. In the last two years, Nunu, you presented some evidence that uh, indeed there's a premium for sustainable products and people are changing their decision making and consumer decisions based on sustainability. Do you think that will continue and that will help companies like uh, Jalmus uh, company or that will change and people revert to a more survival mode in their consumption? What evidence or what do you see? In spite of anything that will happen, my take on that one is the following. 
there is, uh, for most of the companies, um, the dream job, and I've been a business manager for most of my life, uh, the dream, the ambition is to create a sort of an emotional bond with customers. If you create an emotional bond with customers, you have a customer for life. It's like being a soccer fan. I, I, I support Sporting Lisbon. I don't win anything for 20 years, but I don't stop being from Sporting. It's exactly the same. Creating an emotional bond with a customer is a huge challenge. Now, you tell me currently, which is the most emotional thing you can connect to a customer? It's called sustainability. It's economic sustainability, but it's more than that. It's environment sustainability, social sustainability that now more than ever will become, uh, it will come to the front row. So at the end of the day, the opportunity and the sustainability challenge will be for companies to start to continue having this sort of creation of an emotional world to customers around the concept of sustainability. Very good. Thank you. Uh, I would like to pass for, for a final question to, to Inês Ribeiro from Grupo José de Melo Bondalti. Uh, so, uh, a chemical company that partly also does cleaning products, which is probably very busy in the current times. But I'd like to, to hear from you and, and what challenges or questions do you have for yourself in this, in terms of sustainability agenda in these current times, Ines? Thank you. Um, well, um, I'll be short because we are having a, a difficult uh, controlling the time. Uh, basically, yes, we have to keep our plants running and that's a, uh, a challenge in itself, particularly because we have a, a plant that is working uh, near Ovar, so we have to struggle with a particular uh, difficult situation in, in that area. Um, and we have to do this to ensure that not only the, the products come to, to the, the the region so we can clean the streets and clean the public transportation and also continue to have our tap water in every household so it's very important for us to go uh, in business as usual and we did that by uh, allocating uh, an amazing effort to to ensure that everyone is tested and that we have only the people that are necessary which i believe that most companies are uh, also uh, doing the same things. Um, I would say that uh, one of the things I, I like most that we did is that we, we find um, counseling. So we have uh, psychologists talk to our workers if they need to, because it's a difficult times, whether you are working at the plants every day or if you are at home. Uh, either alone or with your family, with your children, it's difficult all around and maybe uh, you have someone that passes away with a disease. So uh, I think this really showcases that we are, we have this uh, thing inside that it's our, it's been with us for more than 150 years, that is we really care about the social system and uh, maybe it's because we are lucky enough to be part of a, fam a family group and so uh, we keep having the same people uh, running the group, and I think that for us it's it's a uh, it's an opportunity, and it's and it's uh, like we it was mentioned before. Also, it's definitely uh, something that gives us uh, an advantage. But I would like to ask uh, Nuno, uh, what do you think? Do you think that this is the time that the, the social sister is going to be uh, winning and uh, keeping up with the financial who is very old and the environmental, which is like coming to maturity? <laughs> Thank you. So I think it's a question about, we were focusing so much on climate change as Nuno showed earlier. And now that uh, the pollution seems to be stopping for two weeks, uh, and the social issues may aggravate. Do you think there will be a shift and the SDGs agenda will shift a lot on the social side and maybe less on the climate side? How do you see that balance? <laughs> well, let me just uh, clarify what, what, uh, what Inej means with social system. It's so certainly a terminology which is not usual to uh, people understand, but it's something that I used to say in my classes, which is, I believe the mother is called sustainable economy, economic sustainability and they have two daughters. One daughter calls environment and the other one social, the environment being older than the other one. But I mean, the question of Inej, it's, it's very key because what this, this uh, crisis is doing is really stretching humanity to, to the limit. 
Uh, we thought we had a sort of an existential threat called climate change, and suddenly we thought, whoa, no, we have another existential threat, which is called social issues. So we have two uh, existential threats threat at the same time, and this one, this system, the social system, will, will go very, very quickly now. I have no doubt about that. And the difference for most of the companies will now be the focus that they will do in, um, in terms of, 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 of the social dimension. Because if you think about it, Paul Pullman was saying one of these days in a conference I've attended online, of course, he was saying something, it will be really a tragedy, thinking about all of the trillions and trillions of dollars that the government said at that disposal now, that they don't really define a new future, a new world more equi equitative. And this is the challenge that we have, and it's all, most of them it's about social, and at the same time we cannot, of course, but the climate change is still there. The issue is there. It didn't disappear. It's just something which it's uh, uh, um, well. Yeah, we see less clouds, but it will disappear if we go back. Any, which I don't believe we will. So uh, yes, social dimension is key. Is nice. Thank you, Nunu. Um, we are a, a slightly over time, so I'll just ask for your patience for three more minutes, uh, because the SDGs agenda has been developed by the United Nations. And we have uh, working with us at, at Catolica, Pedro Neves, who is a consultant with the United Nations, and has a good view of how the UN is looking at the current crisis and, uh, uh, and trying to see how to continue moving forward the agenda. Uh, if Pedro is, is on the line, I would like just to ask him to give us for a couple of minutes just a view from the United Nations on, 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 on the discussions we are having about the SDGs agenda and how to continue promoting it. Pedro? Thank you, Philippe and Nuno. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I, I think it's clearly um, within UN, there is a shift towards a social agenda. And uh, um, the, the document that has been now came out on March 20th, uh, um, it shows clearly that um, history is looking at us and we will be measured and we will be mentioned according to our way of adapting and showing that we have a social responsibility and we have to deal with it and we know how to deal with it. I would say there, there, there are two main reasons. The first one, it's a question of ethics, but I would say eventually even more important, it's a question of economics. Uh, we have to find a way of flattening the unemployment curve. It's vital that we start having and looking at the unemployment curve and we see ways of working with it. And this will not happen through the public sector and especially not through the public sector alone. And so we have to, we need more than ever the private sector enter into the game, to participate into the game, and to venture into new ways of not only keeping jobs, but increasing. And this means a challenge in terms of creativity, of how are we going to deal with it? Not just because it's good for business, because we'll have more clients, because it's good for sustainable business. And, uh, and um, this is um, probably the biggest challenge UN recognizes. This is the biggest challenge UN has ever had since the foundation of UN. And uh, I would say each nation, I would even say each city, each company will be measured in the future on how it dealt with COVID-19. And so I would say that all of us, we'll have to answer to the question to ourselves, but we will have to answer to the, to the questions to everybody around us. Um, we were a couple of months ago, uh, and uh, I just heard the uh, uh, Grupo Melo uh, challenge. How are we going to use the SDGs to ensure that Grupo Melo will have 150 years ahead? I think, COVID-19 is basically asking this to all sorts of corporations. And I think we have to 
look into multinationals and think what is Paris and London and New York doing. But I think even for multinationals working locally, we have to see what are we going to do. And I'm certain that the way uh, corporations will show that have dealt with COVID-19 will persist on their image. And let's hope the reason why this image will persist is for good reasons. And so solidarity is not just a question of survival for those that are less fit. It's a question of survival for the corporations. And uh, I think more than ever, people, planet and prosperity uh, meant so much because indeed we all have to design new equations where prosperity is aligned with people. Pedro, thank you very much for, for that sharing. And I think I, I take it's, it's bold that you say this is the biggest challenge the United Nations has ever gone through. And I think the, the next few months will maybe will prove that statement correct as we see some of the impacts of the crisis around the world. Um, I think the, we tried in this session to have to hear different voices. The voice of Nunu, uh, an evangelist for sustainable development, that uh, has a, an optimistic view of what we can address, but also the voices of company leaders, entrepreneurs, and the United Nations on how we should experience this crisis. Um, I think the audience was relatively optimistic that will accelerate implementation of the sustainable, sustainable development agenda. I also feel, and I think building on, on Pedro's words, that if we all revert to our basic survival instinct, company leaders, consumers, of I have to have enough to survive and, 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 and I'll cut, we will go back in time 30 years in development. If we all understand the magnitude of the challenge that is ahead of us, and if we all understand that by having a different attitude collectively at the community level, at the company level, at the government level, and building that solidarity uh, and looking at the collective interest for these periods, we might do, we may actually be able to reach the point C that Nunu was, uh, was proposing, avoid the worst of the crisis and start in motion a new kind of level of society. That's, that, that will not be easy. And I think it will be up to all of us to own our own family, community and, and company and organization to do our part. 